what's the final digit of seven to the power of 100? To answer this question, we're gonna be using modular arithmetic. So make sure you've checked out my introductory video on modular arithmetic first, as we'll be using ideas from that video. Before we dive in with answering this question, we're first gonna think about what happens when we consider numbers modulo 10. So here we want to find 14 modulo 10. If you think about where 14 would appear on a 10 hour clock, well, 10 would be at the top of the clock, and then you have to count round four to get to 14. So 14 would be at four o'clock. So 14 is congruent to four modulo 10. How about 87? Well, 80 is divisible by 10. So 80 would be at the top of the 10 hour clock. And then to get to 87, we'd have to go to seven o'clock. So 87 is congruent to seven mod 10. How about 123 modulo 10? Well, 120 is divisible by 10, so 123 will be congruent to 3 mod 10. And finally, this big number here, 75,469 mod 10. This looks a little bit scary to work out, but actually it's not so bad because 75,460 is divisible by 10. So the remainder, when you divide this by 10, is going to be 9. So this number is congruent to 9 mod 10. Now, can we spot a pattern in what we've found? Well, it's quite interesting because in each of these cases, taking the number modulo 10 has picked out the final digit of the number. So the final digit of 87 is 7, and that's picked out by taking it modulo 10. And the same in each of these cases, by taking the number modulo 10, we get the final digit. And this kind of makes sense because if you imagine every number has a zero at the end instead of its actual final digit, that number would be divisible by 10. So that number would appear at the 10 o'clock marker at the top of the clock. Then to get to the actual number, we have to add on that digit and we'd count round that many hours on our clock. So we would end up at that number o'clock. So any number taken modulo 10 will produce the final digit of that number. So this is really interesting for our question here because it means that this question, what's the final digit of seven to the power of 100, is actually the same as asking, what is seven to the power of 100 modulo 10? And so suddenly this question is a lot more approachable if we use modular arithmetic. Now let's have a think about how we can solve this question. So a really good first step when you have big powers and you're doing a modular arithmetic style question is to remember that seven to the power of 100 is actually just seven times seven times seven, 100 times. So now we're trying to evaluate this big product, modulo 10. And because we have a product, we would quite like to use our theorem about products in modular arithmetic. So remember, our theorem says that instead of working out seven times seven times seven, 100 times, and then taking it modulo 10, Instead, we can work out individual components of the multiplication modulo 10 and then multiply the result of that together. But hold on a moment, because 7 modulo 10 is just 7. 7 is already as reduced as possible in mod 10. So this theorem currently isn't looking too helpful. However, what we can do is group the 7s in this multiplication. Let's say we pair up the 100 7s. So we're going to multiply these two sevens together and these two sevens together and then so on and then until we get to the final pair. So there are 50 pairs of seven times sevens. Seven times seven is 49. So we can write this as 49 times 49 and so on 50 times. So we couldn't reduce the sevens modulo 10 before because seven was already reduced as much as possible. So this theorem didn't really help us. But now we've got 49s. So we can use this theorem because we can reduce 49 modulo 10. Let me write this on the side. So 49, well, modulo 10, 49 is congruent to nine. Remember, mod 10 really just takes the final digit of a number. So we could rewrite this as nine times nine times nine and so on 50 times. But that's still quite a hard product to work out. We don't really want to calculate nine times nine times nine 
and then work out what that is modulo 10 because that's quite hard to compute. But actually, is 49 congruent to anything else that's helpful? Well, 49 is also congruent to minus 1 modulo 10. Perhaps the easiest way to see that is to think about the spiral representation we covered in the intro video. If you continue coiling the number line round into the negative section, minus 1 would appear underneath the 9. Alternatively, if you subtract 10 from 9, you get minus 1. And so, say you're at 9, if you add 10 and add 10 and add 10, or subtract 10 and so on, you'll keep hitting numbers that are also congruent to each other. So 9 is congruent to minus 1. So this is really good because products involving 1, minus 1 or 0 are really good things to aim for because we can multiply them really easily. So this is actually congruent to minus 1 times minus 1 and so on 50 times. And we know what this is. Minus 1 times by itself an even number of times will give us 1. So this equals 1. I should have written mod 10 here. So that's our answer. 7 to the power of 100 modulo 10 is 1. And this means that the final digit of 7 to the power of 100 is 1. So there we go. We've once again made quite an intimidating question, quite a lot simpler by using modular arithmetic. If you want to see more funky number questions answered using modular arithmetic, check out the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more aesthetic, massy videos, do check out my channel and subscribe!